Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Ishan from Eisenbridge. I am along with our presenter Rohit Ratnamani today. He would be presenting the topic of Kaizen Beyond Retrospective. Rohit, over to you. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Ishan. Hello, everyone. Today's session on Kaizen Beyond Retrospective. So, so uh, my name is Rohit. Uh, been, I'm working as a Scrum Master Team Coach uh, in the current role. Uh, in, um, I've been in IT industry for about last 13 years, working as you know, started long back as an IT team in waterfall projects. Now I'm in, in, I've been working in agile projects, transformation projects for the last seven, eight years now. Um, so that's about me. Uh, I, and outside my uh, agile world, I also uh, right now from last seven, eight months, I'm um, working as an agile coach for my for my own business. Uh, and uh, targeting to be an ICF certified coach, uh, maybe by uh, mid next year. So that's that's my target right now. Uh, that's my ka kaizen for you guys. Um, so on this topic, uh, uh, so um, basically when I when I started thinking about this topic, uh, I was uh, when I when I discussed with my colleagues, or, you know, when, when I worked with organizations uh, in the agile journey. Um, and I ask them what's 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 kaizen for them. Uh, they always come back. They always tell you know I, we are we are doing retrospectives. We are going to have uh, we are uh, have doing kaizen. We are improving. We are just doing retrospectives. But uh, from my perspective, you know there's more to kaizen. It's not only about uh, doing retrospectives. So kaizen has much more uh, meaning or essence purpose. Uh, basically, uh, just not retrospective. So, uh, my idea of uh, putting this uh, slide deck up or you know presentation was just to uh, get this. I did this within my organization just to make them understand. It's not only about retrospective. It's more more than that. And uh, it's not only about uh, in an organization that you can uh, bring in uh, kaizen or think about improvement, which kaizen means. It's in your own life that you have to work or you know improve uh, continuously to be in the market, be competitive, you know, uh, achieve greater heights, basically. So uh, kaizen has to be within your own life as well. So when I think of kaizen within my life, as, as I said, I have been improving. There was the you know few you know ten years back, if I look as uh, look at myself as a, as a project manager, I used to love having. Uh, big documents, requirement documents, technical documents, which I don't like now, which I believe more in uh, providing, uh, motivating, leading teams and helping them improve and excel. So that, that's my Kaizen cycle, Kaizen transformation. So that's, you know, you, you uh, it, it's not only about, Kaizen is not only about an organization or industry uh, jargon, it's, it, it can be implemented within your own life as well. So that, that's the principle that I believe in and I, I I, I believe re retrospective reflection helps, uh, but there's more to Kaizen, which uh, people don't you know, forget about it. So uh, I'll start with a brief history of what Kaizen, or defining Kaizen, basically. So what is Kaizen? Kaizen uh, uh, most of the agile terminologies obviously come have, have their roots from uh, from Toyota. Uh, so you will see all this, all all the uh, you know, Japanese word um, and jargons. Um, and, and, it, it is, and there's a lot of uh, meaning to it, but uh, most of them uh, get lost in translation. So Kaizen means, you know, changing for better, continuous improvement, you know, for every day, everybody, and everywhere. Right? So we, we all need to change. We all know that. We all need to be there uh, trying something new, trying, you know, to improve uh, what we are now. We don't have, we have to question our status quo, but we still do that. We still continue. Uh, doing the same thing again and again, um, and if you think why is it we do this, it's it's, it's hardwired to us. You know, I think we, we are all resistant to change. It, it comes naturally to us. Um, you know, we it's, it's like we want to be in that familiar uh, familiar territory, even if it is hostile. Uh, but we we continue doing that, and uh, you know, uh, at times uh, even I be, become resistant to change. There was, uh, I can give an example, you know, a few, uh, few months back, about two, two months back in my organization, uh, the management came up with a uh, came up with an idea of doing hot desking. And, uh, you know, 
the initial initial reaction that most of us had, even I had, was, oh no, I, I'm not going to have a, a desk to myself. I, I have to roam around it. I, I'll be like um, searching for a desk every day. And I, I initially was resistant to this change. But then I we, we I continued uh, doing this hard thing. And now I I now realize I am I know more people within my organization. I know what's going on in different parts of my organization, not only about IT, but can relate to things that's going on in HR, finance, and I, I'm I'm closer to all those things. So it helps. And uh, um, so. And it's not only about, uh, you know, if you, you would have heard uh, agile transformation is all about uh, changing mindset. But where is this mindset coming from? It is, I know my, my, my mindset gets influenced by a lot of stuff. And one of those stuff is my organization culture around me. How, how uh, my organization supports me or helps me trying something new or, you know, that, that fear of failure, basically, if, uh, if an organization is not uh, willing to try something new or has does not award uh, failure. It means people the mindset will always be to resist change, All right? Uh, but how do you achieve this? You know, we, we really don't know how how to go about doing or delivering a change, right? Um, and the fear of where do you start, whom do you involve, you know? Um, and how do you see it through a change itself is a journey, it really so. All these points um, makes uh, people resist change. Um, in one of you know, few of the transformations I've seen, uh, uh, people are there. People so reluctant to go let go of their uh, designations. I, I want to be called as a senior project manager. I don't want to be called as a scrum master. It's like I'm, I'm going downgrading myself. Uh, I've literally heard people saying that uh, I don't want to be a scrum master. I'm a senior project manager. I want to be called a senior scrum master. So uh, things like this just create more resistance, and uh, every change will uh, have some resistance. But how do you uh, how do you overcome it, and how do you make sure that change uh, is continuous? So you're not stuck somewhere. So uh, so Kaizen suggests how do you want how do you want to improve, and and uh, the way it suggests is defining four principles. Um, one is humanizing workplace. Team participation, identifying waste, uh, everyone work together to be better. So, obviously, uh, when you when you hear about Kaizen, uh, people don't think about the principles that Kaizen uh, suggests, and uh, we don't look at. Uh, so, if you, if there has to be continuous improvement, all these four principles help you achieve that. So, this this is the core. Uh, the core of Kaizen principle is. Uh, humanizing workplace. In, in in the later slides, I will when I talk about different practices that you can uh, you know uh, use to achieve these principles. You would see uh, I, I I will focus more on humanizing uh, human perspective of Kaizen. So uh, you will uh, you can relate to that. Uh, um, and then basically the all if you look at all these principles, is basically saying you are trying to empower resources to bring in more and more creativity bring in more ideas to you know uh, towards uh, towards bringing a change um, uh, in the later slides I will try to relate uh, all these principles to the practices um, so how do you uh, and Kaizen defines a specific cycle a flow of how change uh, how how you know how um, how Kaizen works, so it's a cycle of, it's called cycle of Kaizen, also called as gaming cycle. Uh, PDCA plan, do, check, act, uh, often called as plan, do, study, act, uh, because the check is not, you're not, you'll not get a checklist, it's more of a study. Uh, uh, so it's basically saying you need to understand, first of all, that you have a problem, you need to, you need, uh, you need to improve on something, you have some issues which you need to work on. So you have to develop a hypothesis first, so that you can, you know, then run an experiment. So it's basically like uh, the way we used to do, uh, you know, uh, experiments in our school days or college days in, in mixing two chemicals, trying to run those experiments and see how how uh, is it meet, meeting the expected uh, result or not. If not, then add something more or add some other uh, chemicals and then evaluate the result. That's the third part of it evaluate and then keep running 
keep refining the experiment, start a new circuit. That's the exact uh, but, but the key to starting a Kaizen transformation is to develop a hypothesis. Make sure that you don't have a feel or that, that you have achieved perfect, perfection. Uh, the second you believe you have or you think you have achieved perfection, uh, you will never think of uh, uh, you will never think of uh, uh, you know continuous improvement. You will not uh, think of changing anything. It's like competency. So um, a best example for this, you know, um, uh, Nokia. Nokia was one of the market leaders. Um, that, you know, but they were overtaken by their co competitors. They were uh, they were overtaken, and uh, and uh, the Nokia CEO in one in one of the uh, last uh, press conference he said, you know, we didn't do anything wrong, but we lost. It's basically summarizing that they they basically summarizes what what went wrong there, and uh, and that's what we all need to you know stop thinking about that. Uh, we are not all perfect every time. We need to understand. Uh, that change need, uh, we need to. Uh, they, there are things to improve. There would be, uh, you know, and then try to run those experiments. Retrospectives come into picture when you are trying to evaluate results or coming up with hypotheses. Um, but this entire cycle has to continuously run, and uh, um, you know, uh, that that will help in continuous improvement. So that's basically uh, your principles and cycle of kaizen that needs to. Happen within an within a Kaizen transformation, and uh, if I talk about how and the areas that you need to work on when when you when you are uh, thinking of continuous improvement, it can be broadly classified into four different uh, areas, which is people, value stream, processes, and machinery. Right, so. Uh, machinery, as in again, in IT terms, uh, it's more of technology and all. Uh, but as it, as I said earlier, it comes from uh, man, uh, Toyota from manufacturing background, so you will hear those manufacturing uh, jargons. So there are different practices within these areas that will help you do or in, you know incorporate change. Um, there can be impact mapping, whiteboarding, creating transparency, um, uh, having Kanban board. Um, DevOps, automation, then all different practices, you know, system thinking. Um, in, in in the la next few slides, I, I'll, 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 my focus for this discussion is only people, uh, where I, I want to I would like to discuss how you can help them change, how help them improve, and uh, focus on uh, continuous change. Okay. So uh, the the other three uh, would be more of what other practices can be used. I've taken uh, three practices that I, uh, you know, three things uh, that has you know, helped me, motivated me to uh, continuously think about Kaizen. Um, there are more uh, philosophies, practices uh, available. You can uh, Google it and uh, try it within your own organization, within your own circle. So, uh, and I said, as I, this, uh, when I, uh, I'll, I'll go through these videos and all. Uh, with you, uh, these are more of how do you implement this change. It's not that uh, it worked for me; uh, it will work for everyone. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen like that. So um, I can only, uh, you know, I can only vouch for me that this worked for me. And uh, if you try it on your own, uh, keep doing this, those reflection, retrospective. How do you, you know, re refining your experiment is one key step. If things are not materializing. Things are not going the way you had envisioned. You need to refine your uh, strategy, refine the change, and then try again. So there would be failures, there would be success, uh, but how you change the approach or uh, in process and then try again uh, will make you successful. All right. So um, I'm going to put a video on. Uh, hopefully uh, the audio works and you will, you are able to uh, listen to this video. Okay. And then uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, after the video.
the YouTube link. So if you uh, listen or uh, see, view this video uh, without the background commentary, uh, you will not see any uh, leadership skill or uh, any any leaders leadership. Uh, uh, you know uh, how to become a leader. You will not get that part of the video without any background comment commentary. So it's more of um, if you've seen, uh, if you um, just to summarize the video, there's a shirtless guy, as a guy with torch shirts, who's uh, make, you know, who is dancing um, um, in, in a show. Nobody is following him, and uh, then he got he gets someone to start dancing with him. Uh, he 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 make he makes him feel equal when he dances with him, and uh, then he and the, the first follower then calls his friends. And then there is a second follower, and then few more, and then uh, there's a lot of crowd coming comes in, and then uh, uh, you know joins the joins the party. So uh, the key to the key is not to have not to mix alcohol and drugs. Uh, uh, but there are still some leadership skills and <laughs> skills that sh that's shown in this video. It's more of not how you bring in a change. As a as a new idea, you will also need a first follower who will work with you on the new idea. And uh, many of the projects that I have worked on, you know, if I, I've given ideas, you know, let's try this out. And uh, I've always heard people saying, you know, why don't you try it in your project and let me know how it works. Uh, and uh, you know, the the, the change uh, has to happen. Is not. Uh, it's not about the change, it's how the change is implemented within projects, how you bring in uh, the idea and how, how people perceive it. So uh, you will always see people who don't like changes. So um, the video doesn't have any uh, leadership philosophy behind it, but uh, if you want to connect to this to a philosophy, it, there's a philosophy of diffusion of innovation, uh, which which has uh, different categories of you know adopters, which says, uh, you will have innovators who will come up with the ideas, and, and there would be a mix of innovators. Um, and then uh, they will sell the idea. There would be few who would who would who would be the first followers. Those, those are the early adopters of the idea. Seeing them, there would be some early majority joining in. And then um, as 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 as, the, as more and more people start using the idea, or start uh, taking part in the change you will see another movement by late majority and major, most of the uh, organization will will then be using that idea there's still there will still be some people who who, who are called as laggards who will not uh, come on board so mm -hmm. so uh, an idea will diffuse uh, from innovators to early adopters to early majority to late majority and laggards so that, those, those those are the different levels of uh, uh, adopters. So as I said, it's not only about who, how, uh, uh, not only about the first person who comes up with the idea. It's also about it's also about the first follower. Think about when somebody has you know brought up any idea in a meeting and said you know can we try this out? Can we bring this change in? Have you been that first follower trying out and helping out that idea and uh, you know give give a feedback? Have you been that first follower? Being a first follower also helps. It's not only about you know I can't come up with a new idea every day, right? So you, there, there will be people who who who, who will come up with, uh, with with a very good suggestion and very good idea. So how do you help them? How do you help organizations uh, with with, an, with with a new idea? So how many times you are being the first follower? So that also helps in bringing uh, change, um, and and diffusion of innovation also de depends on the real idea itself. How 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 relevant that idea is for, for an existing problem. Uh, if people are talking something about say technology, and then you say no, I mean, we need to use something. Uh, we need to bring in some project management process. People might not be interested in that idea, but if you say why. Well, why not think about what's going wrong? Try to find out the issue. Can we think of getting a technical, um, you know, expert looking at it? So that will you know, help bring uh, sell the idea. 
Let's see. Um, and uh, the, uh, so I was talking about how how do you uh, uh, diffusion of innovation? How does it spread? So it depends on the idea. It depends on uh, how do you communicate that idea? How how do you make it interesting? How do you make sure that people can relate to those ideas? Um, the third is uh, on time. Basically, how much time do you give the, for people to learn it and, and and start using it? And the last and the most important one is the social uh, environment around this uh, you know idea within the organization. So, uh, so the four four um, things that makes ideas uh, spread within the organization uh, is idea, communication, time, and the social. Uh, uh, more, when you say social, it's more of organization culture. So that's diffusion of innovation, which relates to this video. So you, moving on, uh, the next philosophy that I wanted to discuss was the fish philosophy. I'm not sure if everyone has heard about it. Play this video. Hopefully, you guys are able to hear it this time. So about fish philosophy again. Uh, so this has uh, there's a history behind coming up with this philosophy. Uh, if you saw in that video, uh, fishmongers working, um, you know, uh, having fun while they're working. Um, it's a this philosophy came up uh, in uh, you know um, it's called fish philosophy because it came from those uh, from that fish market. Uh, that that was a place in Seattle called Pike Place. Uh, and uh, in early 90s, it was supposed it was going to be bankrupt and was going to be closed. Uh, the, I think the, uh, the history it says the manager there the, it turned it around. He turned it around. He understood the hard work, the cold and harsh conditions that the fishmongers work work in. Uh, it needs to change. And then he came up with this four philosophy, four 
uh, key points of being there, play, make their day, choose your attitude. And if you read through it, you will realize, you know, the first one says you need to be emotionally available for 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 your people. It's not only about your your own team or your own work. It is around the organization. You need to be available, now, and, and also for the client. Uh, you need uh, the the second one says play. You need to have fun. Yeah, you know. You need, and when you have fun, your work in your work, you you are creative. You are coming up with new ideas. You are enthusiastic. Um, you know. The third one, making their day, making people, you know, del delight, you know, having customer focus, making them, um, you know, providing them something to remember you by, you know? choosing your attitude, and it, uh, you know, you can decide what you bring in to to your work every day, uh, and then that, and the, you know, you you feel the same type of same energy that comes back to you when you are interacting with with your own attitude. So if you are if you're not if you're not talking sense, the other guy will also not <laughs> will not be talking sense. So, uh, you might not be uh, you know you if you relate it to what's going on within your scrum team, you might be able to relate to this philosophy. In, in, in one of my engagement, you know, I started I started uh, there was uh, when I uh, when I started in this organization, I was said my you know this organization is all agile. We do scrum, we do kanban. And uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, doing an agile assessment for them. And um, the first thing I saw was people come into their, uh, people were coming in their scrum calls, and then just coming in for just for being there, not 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 for real essence of you know, participating. So they were there, their body was there, their mind was not there. Um, I've seen organizations hell bent on making sure that uh, that employees work for specific number of hours which now if you see organizations who are in the agile journey they are changing that because they understand that if you don't provide a humanized workplace that's the key principle one of the key principles of kaizen um, you will not get the return so if you want to improve you can't just have the same inputs and expect this and expect a different output so you need to have people think about doing things differently and uh, creating a workspace, creating an environment where people are able to feel needed, feel emotionally engaged within the organization, uh, you will see the difference. This fish, fish philosophy, um, there are, uh, it's not only within uh, within this place, you saw videos where uh, doctors, even it's being used in uh, multinational companies and, and uh, schools uh, to engage students. So, uh, it's 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 relate it's it you can relate it to day you know your day to day activity and and try to you know incorporate or try something different in your own teams to bring in uh, or incorporate this philosophy. So moving on, I'm uh, going to talk about another philosophy, which is uh, which is eight eight steps uh, quarter. Um, uh, Potter's principle basically so it's about leading a change. How do you how do you uh, you know how do you lead a change? Okay. So uh, it, this eight steps uh, you can use it for as big as uh, an enterprise level transformation. You can use it uh, you know for a, for a, you know small idea as well. So uh, but at a different scale and and it makes sense if you when I go through it you can relate to it what, what diffusion of innovation talks about or what that checklist I was doing. So the first step uh, I suggest is to create a sense of urgency. So you need to you need to understand that there is an issue, there is a problem, or there is a vision basically to can be say uh, overcome a competitor or gain some market share, and and make uh, make your organization, your management understand or within your team some you know. Uh, that I, that idea needs to be implemented. Otherwise, there would be subsequent loss, or, or there would be significant loss that if we not if not implemented. And it is suggested that most or majority of the time should be spent here uh, to create this sense of urgency, or create a sense of I, I would say curiosity. And uh, you know, I, in, in my current current assignment, when I, I, the way we are trying to implement. Uh, um, you know, uh, I, I, being agile within the organization, we started with a couple of products. With uh, you know, uh, we first of all the first issue was we we didn't have 
enough agile practitioners, scrum masters to work with all, all the product teams. We identified four teams, two products, uh, and then we started doing scrum, uh, and and uh, and we are doing it, and we are showing it to everyone. Yeah, we, we have our whiteboards in front of everyone. We have our dashboards on whiteboard. Um, the the team does uh, daily scrum uh, on the floor, so everyone can see that. So that creates a you know curiosity within the other teams. And when we started rolling out, uh, you know, uh, uh, we started working with other teams, who, and we saw people being curious to learn what's going on different. What's this change all about? What's going on with the with this team? And it helped us uh, when when we uh, you know started working with the other teams. Uh, because that curiosity made them uh, come on board. So because basically they had uh, reached a phase of early majority where they, they were willing to jump in and then start working. So creating a sense of urgency uh, is the first step. Uh, building, building a guiding coalition. So this one is to find out the leaders who can help you. So if it's in a bigger uh, enterprise transformation, you need to find out leaders who can help uh, support your decision push decisions so it can be across the organization there can be leaders in finance hr in it in you have to find people who will help your idea help this cause uh, followed by creating a strategic vision and initiative this is where i feel most of the organization don't go in detail when they are doing the agile transformation is to make everyone understand how their uh, strategic vision impacts them there's something called as objective and key results, OKRs. So if you have a vision, you break it down to, to the multiple uh, levels and then should, it should come down to the last person working in that chain. And they, he, he should understand what's the uh, what's objective, what, what, how his work will impact uh, the, the, the vision or the, you know, uh, the change that the management is putting in. Uh, so creating a strategy vision it should be short clear have you know it should have some emotional value it should have some creativity so uh, I need to focus on that and get you know get it out so that everyone understands it okay. uh, enlisting a volunteer army is basically communicating as I said you know if you don't communicate your change uh, it loses meaning and uh, if you let in someone else pass on the communication that idea those emotions don't you know it changes after every communication channel so you need to make sure after you have enlisted a volunteer army you have those first followers uh, you know you have you have those first followers who would understand that vision who would understand that idea and then uh, you know then that then they become that shirtless dancing guy uh, within their own group so enlisting a volunteer army getting those first followers and making them uh, making them that shirtless guy uh, uh, then the next one is removing barriers. You know, this one's a key. Uh, you know, people de get demotivated when they see things are not moving. So this is where you need need the help from leaders, making sure you show uh, show everyone that if there are barriers, obviously there is a change. There is not, not, nothing called as a seamless or seamless change. There has to be uh, uh, there has to be resistance. So you will see barriers, and that's where you will need leaders to jump in, help help out and remove barriers. Otherwise, this the more you delay removing barriers, you are going to demotivate the people. Uh, generating the short-term wins is basically don't just think of a long-term gain. Uh, long-term is, long is always to achieve a principle. How do you achieve it? And you know, um, um, the way we do our scrum, how we run our sprints, we deliver every sprint. That's our short-term win in an idea to achieve what the release is supposed to provide uh, and then then that that will demonstrate benefits you know early early benefits uh, it helps people keep motivated saying you know we have achieved something we are achieving every day every week and keeps them motivated next step is to continue that sustaining that acceleration as you are working on any change you you would you you know you you know there there would be a lull period uh, where people might not have that same energy level People might, you know, start feeling down, and, and that's when you need those uh, fresh blood, uh, bringing in new idea, trying out something different. So it, it, it is required, you know. It, it has to be a recursive cycle. You can't just say, you know, you reach perfection and then you stop evolving. 
So you need to get in a new idea how much, uh, and, and not only just bring in new idea, help being be that first follower uh, if someone comes up with a new idea. So sustaining that acceleration helps uh, in making sure people are motivated. Uh, and the last uh, step, and, and all the step, you know, needs to be recursive, as I said, uh, in the instituting the change. So this change, or any, any, a small or a big change, needs to be, you know, it, it needs to stick to your organization culture. Uh, the organization culture drives your mindset. It, it influences your mindset. Uh, if you think of any new resource joining in within your organization, they should understand or feel what's this culture all about, and then they will gel into your uh, way of working rather than being at a distance. Because they, any new new resource coming in might come will will come with their own uh, way of working, and they need to align to something new. So, if you institute this change, the organization culture will make sure that the mindset continues to be the same, and then. You, you, then you can say that this change uh, has been done successfully and now we are working on something different, some other change. So these are eight, eight, eight steps of leading a change uh, and uh, leading a agile transformation at a scale, um, but needs to be looked at again and again in a recursive process. Okay. So those are the three things, the three uh, philosophies that I wanted to discuss about. I have a couple of more slides after this, but. It's more of uh, just for you guys to go go after this session, think about it. Um, but any questions till now on, on this? Uh, so I'll take uh, the first one from Rajeshwari, which says, creating a sense of urgency will lead to chaos and confusion. Change has to be gradual and incremental. So when I said uh, creating a sense of urgency, uh, it's not about doing it uh, in a quick fashion way. It's not about urgent. Uh, urgency is a feeling of why is it required? Why is the change required? If you don't believe, if, if there is no, if you believe that there is no change required, uh, you will see resistance. Uh, change has to be gradual, but it has to be implemented in a way, in a structured way. You have to, you know, the way the Kaizen suggests, you need to have a plan, do, check, and act. Obviously, a change cannot be just said, you know, implement this change tomorrow. Uh, chaos and confusion, obviously, every change has to have some chaos and confusion. If you're doing it at a scale level, there would be chaos and confusion. But the way you, you know, incorporate this change, building a guiding coalition, communicating it out, you know, enlisting a volunteer army, that's what is going to stop that chaos. So obviously, the, when you say it has to be gradual and incremental, it, it will be gradual and incremental only when you when you try to communicate what what is why is it required what is required and who is there to help you out. Hope that answers your question, Rajeshwari. Uh, what is the difference with Scrum? So Scrum is basically a way of implementing agile principles. So a Scrum has oh, you know three roles, uh, some ceremonies, some increments. Um, some uh, some artifacts. So Scrum just Scrum is just a framework. Uh, Kaizen is is a philosophy of how do you improve within within your work organization within your life. Scrum will require improvement within your team when they are working on something and they see things are not working. So you will need Kaizen. Uh, you need to improve. Mm, sorry. Uh, can you share example of institute change? I'm not sure what does that mean, but uh, Mule, if you can um, give me more detail of what do you mean by institute change. Um, and, uh, going to Shashidhar's query, uh, do you think Kanban suits five industry or a specific industry? Hmm. So Kanban, uh, Kanban is a way of managing your flow, right? So again. It's not specific to an industry. Kanban was used for uh, in Toyota. Uh, that's manufacturing industry. Uh, Kanban is now being used uh, in IT industry. So uh, it's the essence of war, how Kanban works, how you manage your uh, flow. Uh, it can work if people are people understand the essence of uh, what Kanban is. So I don't think there is a restriction of using. Uh, it in any in industry, it can work if you understand what Kanban or how do you, what's the real essence of Kanban. 
uh, is there any certification like CSM? Yes, it is. Uh, so CSM is from scrumalliance.org. Um, there are other institutions like scrum.org, which provides PSM, Professional Scrum Master. Um, and uh, there is something called as, uh, if you want uh, Scaled Agile Academy, they provide Safe Scrum Master. So if you can Google on uh, uh, Scrum Master certification, I think even Eisenbridge has some videos on uh, uh, Scrum Master certification. Okay. Uh, Rajeshwari, so you mean to say that you need to reveal the importance of change? It's not, okay. Uh, so yes, any change has to have a meaning or a you know reason behind it. If you say, I want to change this tomorrow and you don't tell anyone why do you want to change? You know, why do you want this change to happen? If I'm if I'm leading a change, I I would like everyone to understand the real essence of why this change is required. So, so that everyone is on board and understand you know real the real purpose of a change. So uh, if it is hidden, the curiosity of why you will see more resistance. So obviously you have to get more and more people to understand why this change is required and, uh, and, and and you will see people are working with you rather than against you. Uh, moving on to the next one, Arvin, change needs to be controlled to track and progress. How do you control it? Based on the pressure from top and resistance, it needs to be controlled to track and progress. Okay. How do you control it based on the pressure from top and resistance from the lower formation? Okay. This is what I get from your query. So you're saying a change has been passed on or asked from a senior management and that change is being resisted by uh, people working in, um, when I, I don't say lower, lower, in terms of people who are the second developer. Uh, senior manager, senior management. So again, if you go, if you think of what I talked about, you know, leading a change. If 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 the if if my developers and testers are not, you will always see resistance, right? So if 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 the top management has thought of any change and not shared how how this how their vision or why is their vision. So uh, why 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 is this? so uh, so you need to understand the root cause of resistance first of all why why is someone resisting a change and then you can come and you know find out there can be some uh, communication gap assignments I have seen people have been told to use this but they're not told they're not been told why what's the purpose behind it. So if you make them understand what's the real cause and how they are getting impacted, how they are working things like object and key results, uh, that can help. So, and then and then you can measure your key results of these OKRs. Uh, you can search on uh, Google OKRs. You will uh, understand how you measure your change, how you track your change. You know change the way it is being registered by, by, uh, by your lower formation. Okay, that answered your question, Evan. Um, moving on to the next one. Uh, how to change the people's mindset? Okay, so um, again, there are different ways. Again, I, I won't say it worked for me, it will work for you. It is not the right, uh, it's not the right statement. So um, one of the transcends of curiosity, um, because we, we were short of scrum masters, we were short of product owners, so we said we will start a small group, uh, four teams, two products, and then we create a curiosity. Uh, in, the, uh, in one of the other transformations where I joined, um, the entire organization was already thinking of implementing SAFE and their project managers were SAFE trained and all. And there was no agility behind things just for doing it rather than understanding the real uh, essence of, you know, uh, of those ceremonies and all. So 
So, changing a mindset is all what is really driving that mindset. You need to put for thing, it can be organization, culture. So, you need to focus not only on a mindset, you need to focus on what's the what's driving that mindset and think about different uh, you know different ways of changing a team people uh, being coached and you know, changing their um, bringing in agile coaches uh, bringing in scrum coaches and uh, helping the team out that can be helpful um is as a methodology uh, okay so change management is is a way of how do you incorporate a change, and it will depend on um, again. So Kaizen is a philosophy. Change management is a process between Kaizen and change management. So it's a philosophy of how how uh, you need to why do you need to continuously improve? It's not only about organization, as I said, and the start. It's also about management. Can you implement? Can you use it in your life? You can. But how do you use it? So Kaizen is just a philosophy. Change management is real. Uh, you know, uh, is a practice or is a process. Uh, moving on to Kishore, how oh, this is different from impediments and skills. So again, so change uh, is not only about. Um, uh, change is not only about removing impediments. Change can be anything. Change means changing a process, bringing in or doing, you know, uh, using a different way of work. That's the way of working. Changing the way of working, changing or bringing in uh, a different kind of, uh, say, automation, different kind of tools. That's a change. So impediment can be in field, but for impediments you can have changes, but the change is a bigger, bigger area, um, and, and it requires a different way of implementing. Um, moving on to Rafiq, does Kaizen work for a brand new team with, uh, in Kanban, which needs high level? I think that Kanban, uh, which needs high level of maturity. Okay, so. Uh, this is I, I I always get get this question you know how differs our philosophy when the team is mature that's not true you can't always expect everyone to be at the same level right you will have diff people with different mindset people at different level of mindset so you will have people who are very matured in understanding and adopting and adopting when you say fifty percent pressure. They are there to carve, right? You, you can try out different things, uh, different new, you know, but they need to be, they need to, they, they would be leaders, right? You, you, they can be, uh, you, you need to find a leader first of all and see if they can get followers. So that's the principle of what Kaizen, right? You need to have uh, leaders and you need to get followers for, you know, spreading out your idea. It's not only Kaizen, it's not only for Kanban, first of all. Uh, it's, it's not tied to any of the agile methodologies or framework. Kaizen has to have, can happen anywhere, everywhere. It can work in X-ray. Um, I know, uh, it, it is not tied to any uh, framework or methodology. It's a philosophy which can be used anywhere, everywhere. Right? Right. So I'll, I'll wind up my session today. Um, but uh, uh, when I talked about Kaizen, uh, there's something called as Kaizen, okay, coming from Toyota's philosophy. Um, so Kaizen is all about incremental evolutionary and continuous change, time change. So there can be a big transformation uh, in terms of changing your uh, strategy, approaches, you know, then, then you have to have different way of implementing that. And that's uh, where and, uh, and, and, uh, and um, you know, at the course, I guess, uh, you need to have very good communication strategy with your uh, team to pass on those ideas on uh, why the change is required. Uh, and uh, I mean, continuous change to an uh, urgent change, basically. So, uh, there are different ways of implementing, but communication is one of the most important or key things I mean, in 